Hello, everybody. We're just all coming in online there. Oh, love, love hearts. Oh, look at that. <laughs> nice to see you. And uh, it's a little cooler than yesterday, thank goodness. I'm still in, I'm in a short sleeve shirt. It never happens in England. But anyway, there we are. I actually had one in my wardrobe. So we've been talking about Van Gogh and his use of, oh, and his interest in nature and in plants and you know taking time to uh, hi Georgina uh, taking time to look down at your feet and so we looked at a lot of his compositions yesterday that involved quite sort of in, in Van Gogh style of course but involved looking at foreground and looking at division of space and how he was using rhythm and form to describe the foreground and at the end of this book which is also quite interesting we have a little chapter on some of the ideas that he was uh, thinking about and um, so you know he was thinking about wheat fields and cypresses uh, and a sort of um, an anchoring of perspective Oh, hi, Jean. You're, you're up so early. And, and then there's another guy who comes on and he says, you know, it's three o'clock in the morning where I am. So I'm like, whoa, whatever. <laughs> you're all welcome. Um, and um, so anchoring the perspective creates a foreground with a distinct diagonal view. So as much as, you know, I'm painting wildflowers and, and hedgerows and fields. There's also a sense at some point where we need to bring in some diagonals into the foreground because that will help us to walk through that path, to, to give us a lead in to the composition. Because often when we paint things uh, in the foreground, upright grasses and this sort of thing, it's a bit like a cage isn't it you know it's a bit like a like we've put something in front of our viewer so a bit like classical still lives where they had knives and things lay you know laying on a table uh, we have to do that with our composition with the shape of our plant so there is a bit of a a flow through so i'll flip you around again so what i have done since yesterday is to develop that flow through and uh, that's lovely, Cheryl, lovely that you could be here. Um, you know, what I've tried to get here now is using the darks. This is what I start. we started yesterday where we did the velatura over, over the back part of the painting to add a veil to push it back into, uh, to get spatial depth. I've marked in these darks here just to give us something, but I haven't marked it across horizontally I've given it an angle and what that does is you know our eye will walk through here and it's kind of got these lovely shapes that lead us through and of course I mask these off so some of these are quite strong underneath so we can see them really clearly so think about that when you're developing foregrounds and you know uh, that sort of thing uh, now just on the aside I've had a question and do, do message me any questions you have, technical questions or whatever. I can't always answer on the live because I'm painting and this Laura's here answering them for me. But um, so, you know, I do try and get to them afterwards if, if, they, if they are easy to answer. Longer ones take a bit more time and probably more like an email. Um, someone has asked me about what kind of brushes do I use? And I use a huge variety of different types of brushes. As you can see, I'm just swiveling my little pot round there. And you can see there's a huge, huge variety of brushes. And I also use these brushes as well. So, so th these, these are regular. I've just washed them all. I've just cleaned them all today. So I've got clean brushes. But that's what I've been using all week. What... Uh, what I have found from from my practice uh, as as regards brushes is concerned is that with cold wax it can build up in bristle brushes on the fibers the wax just kind of catches on these dry fibers and it can be very hard to get out 
so you know you want to kind of clean those off straight away if you are using bristle brushes and I do use some bristle brushes for certain for certain jobs I really like a lot of these longer longer type brushes this is called a an Egbert I really like these for cold wax and mostly I use a, a, an acrylic type brush a pro krill and it's got a synthetic fiber but it's very soft and what you find with the cold waxes it comes out very easily off these fibers there's nothing to catch the wax so these are easy to clean they also give you a nice brush mark and they, they, they last a good time. I mean, some of the, this is a Stephen Quiller brush. This is a watercolor brush from Richardson's and I've got hundreds of these and um, these are fantastic. I just love these. These are my favorite brush actually. And I use them for everything and they're strong and durable. In fact, Richardson, uh, Jack Richardson started off in brush manufacturing. So he really knows his stuff, but these, these are great and easy to clean with the cold wax and there's a lot of bristle there can you see that there's a lot so it holds a lot of paint you can do a lot of stuff with that brush and they come in all different widths and i think that's about two inches so that's really good with cold wax if you want to just because sometimes you get a bit tired of the mechanical squeegee and roller you know um mark and you want to make a different sort of a mark that's that that's quite good and you know i'm a landscape painter so i'm i'm more on the side of realism perhaps than total pure abstraction but the watercolor brushes those richardson watercolor brushes i can thoroughly recommend i'm not affiliated to any company which is why i have so many brushes different types of brushes so i have used a brush to mark in these uh green the darker green and again you know i got my ruler you know and i've just come in down here like so and marked that in then i've come in with a green a kind of a khaki green with the roller and i've rolled up in here like so so i've layered again I've, lay I've layered another layer over the top of this to give me a little bit more. And then we're going to put, this doesn't matter, those little bumps actually, because we're going to add a lot more of those. Uh, we're going to add the cow parsley in here. So this kind of creamy, greeny tone over the dark green is what we're kind of aiming for. So I would probably at that point just get a palette knife and just for that cow parsley, just use there it is. Let's see, I'm gonna just put it up here for the moment so you can see a little bit of it. Just that cow parsley here that is at the top of that photograph. That's what we're doing at the moment. And I'm just going to get that khaki green I just showed you. And it's 50-50 wax and paint. So it's got quite the normal sort of kind of wax we have normally. And I'm going to just pop that in with the palette knife. So it sits up quite, quite strongly now because this is thin paint. So layering thick over thin will also help you... Um, work with more spatial depth you know knowing knowing that thickness helps that and I'm just using this as a neutral green underneath I don't want to get white too soon just keep a neutral color for this cow parsley underneath so just as I'm sort of thinking of the form of the cap shape that it has Thinking of this little path thing, leaving a way in. So I've got that neutral colour in there. Just kind of just come in with a little 
you know how it is when you sort of see a few of them they, they catch the profile catches them now i'm just going to add some white to that and just put in a lighter value of that cow parsley green because cow parsley is really green sometimes it looks really white on mass um, but it's actually got a very greeny tinge to it so i can come in with a lighter value as well okay Just putting it down where I feel it. Knowing the anatomy of the plant or the structure of the plant, you know, uh, do you remember early on in the in the month we did some printmaking? And we printed from different plants and the cow parsley was one of them so you know we really got a chance to um, you know n understand its form so that's why i started uh, with the, the study of the physical plant way 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 back in the end of march because it's all leading to a deeper understanding of my subject and given i'd kind of decided this year I wanted to spend more time on looking at wildflowers and hedgerows, nat the natural landscape. Uh, really, when the COVID lockdown happened, I was already, you know, I was already planning, you know, what I was going to do in my head. So, you know, I just carried on doing it, I guess. And um... Now I'm using a little bit of marble dust. I've labelled it marble dust, so I guess that's what it is. <laughs> mad scientist uh, and I'm going to mix it into a little bit of wax I'll show you that I'll mix in the wax first so it doesn't fall off the paper now with marble dust you do want to be a little careful you know it's it's a dust so you don't want to really breathe it in you can see it's falling off if I hold it up uh, mix it in with the wax first so that's just marble dust with a little bit of the paint and clear wax all right now that's the paint is the paint quantity here is negligible it's really the fact that it's wax with marble dust that's important the fact that it's got a little bit of paint in it is just helping me see it and i'm going to get the roller and roll that marble dust wax in over this See how brilliant this is when I've done it. Again, get to know your tools. Get, you know, make friends with your brushes. Make friends with your tools, because these are the these are the things that help you become the painter you want to be. It's not just not just in your mind but you know when they say a workman can't blame his tools mm, you know to a point <laughs> if you don't know your tools uh, then you know I, one of the things I do find with teaching is um, you know how much pressure do you apply to something you know how, how, how much weight do you do you put um, into that so you know, knowing knowing that. So, uh, Pauline, you've asked me what kind of paper is it? is it? This is an oil and acrylic paper. It's similar to this here. That's a Windsor and Newton one, but I think this is a the one I'm using at the moment. Is the last of a Daler and Rowney oil and acrylic paper. Uh, it has been gessoed before, so it was gessoed yesterday. So it's got a surface of something underneath it, so it's it's um going to help preserve the paper, though it that paper is sized for oil and acrylic. And Susan Kelly, is that oils? Yes, it's oil and cold wax. If you see the word cold wax, you you know, think oils, all right? Um though I do use acrylics for an underpainting, there's never a cold wax mixed into acrylics, so that's if you can remember that and if you're starting out with this that's a good um uh, little 
guidance bearing point for you. Right, I'm going to add some lighter tones into that. Again, just mixing a little white and I'm going to just come in there with the palette knife again. This time I can just just you know put that palette knife on and just the way it makes this sort of mark. You know, if you like the videos and things like that, you know, do feel free to let your friends know. It's great to have more people on board here that um, are interested in this because there aren't that many people doing landscape painting uh, like this in oil and cold wax. And it would be nice to build up a bit more of a community uh, of people interested in landscape painting using this material. It's very different from really using it in, in the way a lot of the abstract painters use it. So this is a bit closer to traditional oil painting. So some of the principles of traditional oil painting sort of apply here, which you might not, you might not sort of do if you were just abstract painting. So I just wanted to show you this technique because it's just wonderful. I love it. And, you know, it just creates this lovely airiness. Uh, you get a little bit of that lovely background coming through. It's not too heavy. It, it is abstracted, and I like that too. Um, and it's very reminiscent of the countryside. Uh, I posted last night, you know, the Lark Ascending, uh, Ralph, Ralph Vaughan Williams's Lark Ascending. You know, just there's a lightness of being in that piece of music, you know. And that's something of what I do want to capture in these paintings. And again, you know, I can come in with that roller. Just things that I want to smooth down a bit. I'll just mark in some of these unfortunately most of my workshops have been cancelled this year I keep getting updates from various places um, I have got Lund Gallery still booked in for October but we shall see but it looks like pretty much uh, everything before then is not going though um i am going to switzerland in september so if anybody happens to be in switzerland or is interested in coming to switzerland uh it's just if not if you're from the states but uh Euro europe will be able to fly within europe and i will be able to go to places within europe but if you're in the states you probably won't be able to come over here without doing quarantine so we just have to go with it as as and when it just makes it very hard if you're booking flights and accommodation that's all so great stuff it's looking really really nice you and we can cut into this as well for because there's the green underneath if you remember turned on there was the green underneath so I can cut into this green if I want. I'm actually doing it with a squeegee but I could do it with something else um. I can bring in some of these stems by cutting in it's also a nice way to work positively and negatively like that. I can cut them like that. 
you can see that dark green now underneath comes becomes very useful and this was our kind of lead in area wasn't it in there so i just want a little bit more green showing in there just to get a little bit of interest so we're not feeling like this is a fence okay bring some of these up. I actually have a little bit of dark green here as well so I can put that in as well. So I haven't really got any yellows or anything in this painting I've just left it to, I've just left this as a, as a very simple study Now, over where we've had that green, I'm going to bring in a light. Okay, so because that will help us focus on that as a particular bit. So that dark green is quite useful like that, isn't it? Now, as much as things go like that, you know, to see if you can also get some, you know, some things that break, break the pattern. If you haven't seen the YouTube video that Laura made of all the projects we've done during the lockdown, I'd recommend you having a look at that. If you feel that you've missed out on something, a, a technique, they're all on the YouTube video of the different projects. So then you can go back and see which videos you'd like to catch up on. Because really these demos are a combination of everything we've been doing so far. Um, for those of you that are coming in sort of at the latter end of it all so there's a lot of techniques in here but we've kind of gone through them all individually <laughs> Christine <laughs> Switzerland in September I know I'm hanging out for it I, I am hanging out for it Absolutely. So everybody keep your fingers crossed for me that I can get back into a bit of live teaching. Don't mind online teaching, but I must say it's nothing nicer than being in with people. That's, that's looking good there so far. So I'm going to just leave that for the moment. I'm doing well for time. So I've got to just do a shorter demo and a bit more work on that. And I needed to talk about brushes for the people that have asked me about that. Just going to do a little bit more work on the on the kind of knitting in together now of the sky. I just need to add some more paint on there. Again, I'll just mix. Just mix some wax into the paint here, so for those of you that don't do this all the time, I'll do it in front of you. With wax, sort of measure out, you know, how much paint you're going to need. Okay, and really it's, it's a 50-50 mix of paint and wax. And you can see how that changes. The any more than that, the colour would, would not be strong enough. But the colour stayed the same, but there is that translucency when I run, run that down there. hope you can see that. Oh, yeah, fingers crossed for Lund as well. Oh, Yorkshire. <laughs> I'm desperate. <laughs> and, of course, if I come up to Lund, it'll be heather season which is the reason i booked the workshop for then as well so i just think you know just get used to mixing different weights of wax you know as a as a um that you have a feeling for that because 
you know I, I don't use the one I don't use the one level of wax for everything you know I, I really do vary it from 50 50 right down to oil paint on its own okay just put a bit of white into that as well The advantage of that is, you know, that we can start using the, the oil and cold wax as a medium. And when you buy it on the tin, it says oil and cold wax medium. Uh, it's, n it's not a paint, it's a medium. And therefore, you know, we can work with it with our oil paint and get a more varied surface by varying the amount. I often just use a cloth to move it around as well. I quite like the like the surface that that leaves and if I want the tree you see I can just bring the tree back by wiping back into that foliage okay so I've strengthened up that sky it doesn't look so wishy-washy as it was actually fog has it does have a tiny bit of yellow in it but I haven't it would mix up a gray probably from a cerulean blue and a cadmium orange if I have time I'll put that in but at the moment that will do for the atmospheric sky It's useful again for the horizon line. Just add a little bit of white into that. Again, 50 50. This will be a 50 50 mix. So I like to use the book, I, I like to use. really to give you a nice easy I'm gonna come down with a squeegee paper's really lovely for doing this it has a lovely surface it, it, it doesn't sort of catch um, and you can move the wax easily across it sometimes I find with the multimedia boards you have to get so many layers on before you can really start to enjoy enjoy the paint just come in here with a bit more depth of paint that doesn't look too thin put the paint on straight away with the palette knife as well. I wanted more say I wanted you know really something a bit so it depends on how thick you want the paint. It's quite nice to spend some time and you know work out some of these field patterns. That's just a nice just how the fog sometimes catches certain certain bits and that's dark there anyway so that's good so now 
nice chance to also add some dry pigment. And I probably put some pan pastel on that in a kind of a goldy yellow. I'm going to have to be careful because, of course, I'm working up like a bit. But, you know, some area where I think, you know, I can just tap that on really carefully like so. There's an intensity of colour to you know to the pigment I can just get that on my brush there's a little bit of wax on the brush and that helps I mean I could have this flat and sort of scrape the pigment on but you know that kind of goes in places sometimes where I don't want it so I have found this is a nice way to just work and also it helps to tap that pigment into the paint it gives you just that little bit of extra control of the material Nothing worse than the stuff that suddenly tips out all over your board. And, um, even just now that I'm looking up here, I've had some warmth and right up the top of the horizon there. So that's a nice way of using, uh, that's a good way of using pan pastel as well. So that's another, another, um, you know, another technique you can try. Probably now just uh, just let that sit a little while. Start to change some of that green grass. Maybe my big brush. So I use something like a mixture of solvent with the oil painting medium. That's from Zestit. So I'll use that to help me get a little bit of looseness. I find that oil painting medium is, is excellent. I, uh, do any of you use it? I know I always include it in the packs that you can buy from Zestit. But you see here I'm using that wide brush. And that's a Stephen Quiller watercolour brush. And I'm just working that. There's a little bit of wax in there, but that oil medium is just helping to move it around like proper paint. Proper paint. Oh, did I say that? Like paint. <laughs> um, so this, in effect, guys, is a glaze, in a, in a sense, because I've used the medium. And all I want to do, you know, is I want to just run this across like so. Don't want to. Now, for me, it's just helping. It just helps to blend things a bit. Can you see the intensity of the colour? Did you see that? It just helps to beef up the intensity. Really want that lovely, strong spring green. Okay. I can bring it down in between some of this cow parsley, like so. So it's given it, it's a, it's a, only a thin glaze that I'm adding in just over the top. running it this way as well just make sure because I, I have missed a few places so I don't want it patchy and I quite like that feeling of going horizontally as well because it has a sense of the wind crossing the field you know that sort of feeling when you see something moving in a camera it creates this kind of blurry blurry effect like that Bring it up here. Just because the brush has a slightly 
minuscule amount of green. I've cleaned it, but it has a slightly minuscule amount of green. So I'm knitting, I'm knitting the sky with the land. You know, what I often say, whatever's in the sky is in the land. Okay, so that's given you a good start on, you know, something you can try for your wildflowers or just pick one species of grass or the, uh, the cow parsley and, you know, try and work in with marble dust, dry pigment, the thinner washes of paint and then maybe some of this... Um, scratching through where there's the darker green underneath and you know we've still got areas here where the underpainting is showing so that warmth of that lovely underpainting is showing so let me see if there are any questions quickly Oh, thank you, Bernice. <laughs> Beatrice, I will uh, put that into translate as a uh, um, comprende. All right. Um, and Annie, the paper uh, was a Dale and Rowney one, which I finished, but I, I also use this paper here which is the Windsor and Newton Gell area. Not all the time, but when I'm doing these sort of quick studies, I find them just, it's a really nice paper to work with. Uh, this is the other painting that I was doing from the other day. I haven't done much more to it, uh, but I'll probably work on that a little bit more. But it's, it's exactly the same. Um, this is on a linen board, so it's exactly the same process. So I'll work on this one that we started three, three or four days ago. But, you know, I'll keep building it up as well. These take a lot longer to finish, so that, uh, that's a bit um, more you know, intense. So it's a bit harder to do as a demo because you can't really do it in a week. So, uh, yeah, um, someone asked about the sky colour. That's King's Blue. That's a Michael Harding king's blue i always mix it with other colors though so i really like it mixed with a touch of of cadmium orange uh, i find king's blue on its own a little too violet but if you mix it with the complementary cad orange it just tones it down just grays it down a little and makes it a bit more earthy so cerulean I use for the sky as well. Uh, cerulean also I break down with a tiny bit of cadmium orange and it just makes for a, for a really, really lovely sky. Sometimes I, I add a little um, magenta into it as well if I even want to make it more purple. So anyway, thanks for joining me. I've got to do some cooking now because I'm going to visit a friend who's uh, just come out of hospital. So I'm going to do my baking and then I'm going to drop it on the fence <laughs> and uh, then she can pick it up from there. But uh, stay safe, everyone. Uh, yeah don't, don't take any chances and uh, hopefully um, I'll be sending out the zoom invite tomorrow for Thursday so if anybody wants to join the zoom uh, it's a bit more I think with the zoom it's a you know you can chat amongst yourselves and it's a little little bit less on Facebook so you know it's a little bit more private which is nice just amongst ourselves so um, contact me via my website if possible because I lose messages on here and uh, it's nickyheenan.com and I'll pick up your emails and send you the um, the zoom invite for Thursday okay take care everyone and I'll see you later bye